32 kilometers off the coast of Delta State, Nigeria, and 30 meters below the surface, a team of South African divers inspect the remains of a sunken tugboat. Their mission? Recover the corpses of 12 crew members aboard the once sailing vessel. Up to this point, four bodies have already been discovered. Then, What's that? He turns around to find something that would change the entire nature of the operation. There are 12 crewmates manning the ship. Among the dozen is 29-year-old Harrison Okenny. He's up at the crack of dawn. He hears the raging storm outside, but thinks nothing of it. He's grown accustomed to the sound after weeks on the sea. Without warning, a rogue wave slams against the ship. Harrison struggles with the door, but the craft is now flipped upside down and it's sinking. Drenched in darkness and surrounded by broken glass, he follows the reflection of his fellow crewmate's phone. They all make their way towards the emergency hatch where, violently, water forces itself in. Within seconds, his co-workers are swept into the sea and he's thrust back into the bathroom. The door locks. Thinking only of his family, he prays for survival. And I was right in the water and I know I'm going to die. Jackson 4 hits the muddy seabed, and O'Kenny frantically swims around and lifts his head to the ceiling of his watery prison. And he's finally able to breathe. In the darkness, the screams continue. Then, complete silence. Harrison knows he must act quickly if he wants to live. After some time, he eventually finds the engineer's cabin with a 1.2 meter air pocket within. But there's other pressing issues he must address. Most prominently is his worsening hyperthermia. He's only in boxers and the frigid temperatures of the Atlantic Ocean are fatal. He uses two mattresses, along with fibers he strips from the wall, to make a platform for himself. He's now elevated on top of the water. The oxygen supply is slowly dwindling with every breath he takes. And I said, God, let that will be done as it is in heaven, because I have tried my best. And I have called on you, and you have never failed me before. And you have never failed me at all in my life. So as I say that, to me, if death comes, then it comes. He smells the stench of death from his now deceased team members and hears the aquatic life devouring the bodies. He is under the impression it's been less than a day. Above the surface, 62 hours. Nico Van Heerden is one of the divers on this expedition. All right, how you doing, Nico? Just talk to me and I'll help you, eh? Okay, so have you come into the next deck? To the main deck? All right, so you should be walking on the, on the, on the ceiling, yeah? Okay. What's that? Oh, okay. All right, you found one, yeah? He's alive, he's alive. Okay, keep him there, keep him there. In this exact moment, the operation changes because a specific challenge is arising. All right, just keep him there, keep him calm, okay? Okay. Medical advisors warn that due to the immense amount of time that Harrison is under extreme pressure, 
it's likely his body has absorbed a lethal quantity of nitrogen, an extreme case of what is commonly known to divers as decompression sickness, or in the best case scenario, he would only suffer joint pains and rashes. In the worst case, paralysis. In short, it's dangerous to bring him up directly to the surface, so... Okay, listen to me. You're gonna, we're putting the head on so you can breathe, okay? All right, now, you mustn't panic, eh? Okay? You must listen to me, all right? All right. We're gonna take you in the water, and we're gonna take you to the bell, okay? And then we're gonna bring you home, okay? All right. He's then lifted into a diving bell and spends the next two and a half days in a decompression chamber. What's your name? Harrison. Okay, Harrison. My name is Colby. Okay, and I'm gonna bring you home, okay? And the diver that's helping you now, his name is Nico. Okay, that's Nico, okay? And I was good because I was not afraid anymore because I know it's life and death. The, the, road, the, the, the line is already drawn. If you want to come, let it come. He vows never to return to sea again. And instead, he finds a new job on dry land. classes that teach through interactivity, like this lesson on the center of mass. Here it's less about memorizing or regurgitating facts for a test, more about intuitively understanding the concepts behind a lesson in order to forge a new path ahead. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Ah!